Good morning to all. My paper is on peripheral and posterior pole changes in retina in moderate to high myopes, a retrospective study. Introduction Myopia or short sightedness is a frequently occurring ocular disorder affecting worldwide. It can uh, divide into mild, moderate, and high severe high myop. In our study, we are dealing with uh, moderate and high myopia patients. Peripheral retina changes include white without pressure, lattice degeneration, steel tract degeneration, retina holes, hole should tear, retinal detachment, and posterior pole changes via myopia traction maculopathy, which include foveal schisis, foveal detachment, macular hole. Attachment, macular hall with foveal macular hall with the foveal myopic macular, epiretinal membrane, and posterior staphyloma, myopic crescent in high myops. For other posterior pole changes, which include macular changes like core retinoatrophy, constituent tessellated fundus, macular cracks, uh, macular bruise membrane, dome shaped macula, neovascular myco, uh, myopic maculopathy, which include. Uh, choroidal neovascular membrane, other peripapillary changes like peripapillary intracoroidal cavitation, myopic corners, pitting corners, and epiretinal membrane vascular microfolds. Aim of our study which include to evaluate the retinal uh, posterior pole and peripheral retinal changes in moderate high myopic patients. Materials and methods which in, uh, we are conducted a retrospective study, 75 high myopi, moderate high myopic patients who attend the outpatient department of a tertiary eye care center between June 2022 to 2023 were included in our study. All patients underwent comprehensive ophthalmological evaluation including uh, miscarriage visual acuity, uh, slit lamp myo microscopy, cycloplegic refraction, lateral fundus examination, OCT, and optima clinical feature, white field imaging, and investigations are repeated on follow-up visit, and, and statistical analysis done using chi-square test, and p-value less than 0 0.05 we taken as significant. Inclusion criteria include more than 10 years of age and moderate high myopes. Exclusion criteria we include myop less than 0.3 diopter. Unless some minus 3 diopter patients with uh, any other retinal pathology. Uh, results were uh, more than uh, 3 about 3 fourth of the patients were under 30 years of age group, and we uh, found that uh, 50 above 50 percent and 50 uh, equal proportion of moderate high myo patients. And peripheral retinal changes were found in 61 percent of the myo patients. Most, uh, most high uh, prevalence in uh, white without pressure is the most common finding and next one is lattice degeneration. Posterior pole changes were only found in 8 percentage. Posterior staphyloma is a more frequent change and second one is myopic crescent. Uh, peripheral retinal changes were seen almost equal proportion in moderate high myopes. 83 percent of the posterior pole changes were seen in high myope and only 17 percent is seen in moderate myope. Uh, while comparing the lattice degeneration, almost half of the patients uh, have lattice degeneration in both groups, slightly high preponderance seen in high myope. There is, there is no significant association seen between lattice degeneration with the moderate or high myopes. Uh, other findings we include three high myope patients had history of prematurity and there is no evidence on laser treatment in retina. Two patients had character corners and other uh, one patient had malformed clinical features and features ectopia lentis. Three patients had retinal detachment and uh, two of the patients had already diagnosed multiple lattice with holes and their advice by the laser they lost the follow up and present less retinal detachment. Intervention include uh, about 56% of the patients were kept under observation and 40% underwent barrage laser or advised barrage laser, 4% underwent uh, VR surgery. Outcome include out of 75, 74% patient faced stable visual outcome and uh, who underwent the retin withdrawal and retinary surgical intervention. Finally, they had stable attached retina. Discussion include Cheng et al's Dani cross section study in total 120 high myopic individuals and postural changes were 2.5 percent and 61 percent were peripheral retinal changes. The study showed a significant association between peripheral retinal changes that is degeneration with the high myopia. Katwani et al's study prevalence for peripheral retinal changes in myopia patients which include my mild, moderate, and high myopia. Uh, they also uh, showed a significant increase in peripheral retinal changes with the increase in myopia. 
Uh, in our study, we included moderate to high myopic individuals. Peripheral retinal changes were 61 percent. Postural changes were 8 percent. We couldn't find any significant association between uh, postural changes with the high myopia or peripheral retinal changes with the moderate myopia. Conclusion: Peripheral retinal DNA changes were found in considerable proportion of patients subject with moderate to high myopia. Postural changes were more seen in high myopia. Some of the uh, these retinations might predispose to visual impairment. Highly myopic individuals should be educated for the various symptoms. Symptoms like flashes, floaters, and, and seek care immediately if symptoms arise. As retinal detachment is one of the serious complications of the disease, can compromise vision. Early recognition and uh, treatment is for the predisposing peripheral retinal degeneration breaks is important. Uh, timely intervention can have good visual outcome. This is my references. Thank you. What's the aim of your study? Why did you do this study? Uh, did you just do it just for the sake of doing the study? I'm just asking you because uh, when you had, uh, when you have a when you want to do a study, one thing is that it should bring out something little unique, or you okay. must be able to find out something which mm -hmm. is already established. You want to confirm it, or you want to find something unique. Uh, most See, of the what are you, is there anything in your study which is different from what has been uh, found? Old, uh, almost study, all other studies were. Uh, usually high myops on all comparing all other myops mild moderate high in my study we are comparing uh, comparing not uh, included moderate high myop something unique is uh, we could actually we couldn't find any association between high myop uh, postural changes with high myop or peripheral retinal changes with moderate myop what is why, why do you think that is so uh, because the see first of all your uh, study population is extremely skewed you are not studying cross-sectional cross -sectional patients. Cross-section means you go out into the population and uh, look at the myopes. You are actually taking myopes who are coming to your hospital. They will come to your hospital because they have a problem. Isn't it? Or they have been told they have a problem. Isn't it? So there is an extremely skewed population. So that is one drawback. And secondly, it's a retrospective study. So, and your population is not uh, randomized or it, it, it is not uh, a cross-sectional study. It mm. is a hospital-based hospital study. So, that is one disadvantage. Second thing is, uh, your study numbers are too low. Mm. What's your number? What's the number? 75. Yes. That's very low mm. for to know because if you really want to compare it with the cross-section study, you need to do little more. Mm. So, first thing is when you do the study, you must, you can actually do this better. You can sit, sit with your statistician and ask them because what is the prevalence of myopia in general population? You give the statistics to your statistician and ask the person how much should be the number that I should do so that I get a statistically significant, significant. Uh, you know, value. So, because myopia is not an uncommon, what is the, what is the prevalence of myopia now? And by, there is a projection now. So by 20 by 50, half of the, I mean, one fifth of the world's population, half of the world's population is going to be myopes. So it's not a joke. And out of that, one fifth is, or 25% are going to be high myopes. So your study has a relevance only if your numbers are significant. 75 is too low a number. That is the first thing your study uh, uh, glaringly tells you. So numbers are very important when you're doing a condition which is a very prevalent condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is something. Okay. So if you really want to do the study well, you have to include large numbers. Yes. Okay. okay. And you can do hospital based, no problem, but your numbers have to be good. And ideally, it should if it is a cross sectional study going into the population and doing it, that is good. Okay. 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 And uh, you should compare it with a normal population, then it will be more relevant yes. because then you can really say. And in your study, you found that uh, the peripheral retinal degenerative changes were almost similar in uh, moderate uh, myopes to high uh, myopes. High myopes. Um, wh why do you think that is so? Uh, Actually, in fact, the peripheral, peripheral retinal degenerations are more in moderate, moderate, moderate myopes. myopes. It is a known fact. Mm. And uh, the posterior pole changes are, more, uh, will be in high, high myopes. myopes. Okay. Mm. So I think you should work on the numbers mm. and see if you can. Uh, improve on it mm. okay so that would be something and uh, yeah this is something because numbers really matters in a condition like myopia okay so thank all you. the best thank you